All right, everybody, welcome to another fun Avoid the Steeler Shit video. Today, I am finally getting to the all-important engine oil change. So along with like changing a tire, changing your own wiper blades, all that stuff, this is one of those things I feel like everyone should know how to do. Male, female, it doesn't matter. And once you uh, see the video, you'll see it's really easy. Uh, so you should be able to do it yourself. Interestingly enough, you guys know I always like on all these uh, different oil change videos and everything so far, I like to show you how much money you can actually save by doing this basic maintenance yourself. And on some of the other oil changes, like the front diff, rear diff, transfer case, all that, it's usually quite a bit of money, like 50 to sometimes $150, uh, just doing this stuff yourself. Uh, but for the engine oil change, uh, you're definitely going to save money because all you really need to buy is the filter and the uh, actual oil, assuming you have all the, the tools needed. Uh, but, you know, lube places, even the dealership, they don't really charge you that much to do this anyway. It's probably going to be between $50 to $80 if you uh, get conventional or synthetic motor oil. Uh, so you will still save some money. It's probably cost you maybe about, I don't know, $35 to $40, bucks, depending on which oil you go with. Uh, but it is fun to do. And if you're like me, you're paranoid about taking your vehicle to these lube places or even the dealership, and you don't really trust that they're filling the oil, putting the right kind of oil. I mean, I've seen all kinds of issues, and I've heard about all kinds of issues. So even though you might not be saving enough as much money doing this oil change compared to the other ones, you will definitely get that peace of mind knowing it was done correctly, full amount of oil in there. So let's see what we need to do the simple maintenance. Okay, as far as everything you need to do this, obviously to begin with, you will need your oil for my 4 liter V6 Tacoma, uh, second gen. The Toyota recommended oil is 5W30. And they said including the oil that is in the filter for a four wheel drive model, you need 5.5 quarts. So you can get these five quart things online. I think they're like 25 bucks and I went ahead and got an extra quart just in case. The amount of oil needed does change just a little bit whether you're four wheel drive or just rear wheel drive and then obviously 4x4 and all that so uh, just look it up on your uh, Toyota manual on mine it's page 534 next thing you need obviously is the new filter I'm using the OEM Toyota filters I will put a link in the description down below uh, which part number and where I got it I think it was on Amazon and it's about ten dollars it's always good when have, doing any kind of oil change to have some kind of super absorbent cloth rag just in case you spill anything Always good to have some kind of gloves handy uh, just to keep all the oil off your hands in case you get a little sloppy. You will need a 14 millimeter socket and a socket wrench. I also like to use a uh, sort of mini cheater bar like this uh, when doing any of these, uh, you know, removing any of these bolts that are under the car that uh, just remain static for a little while. It makes them definitely easier to get off, especially considering you're usually lying on your back and it's some weird angle. Also, with regards to removing a bolt that's just sitting under your truck, getting all kinds of crud and corrosion on it, it's always good to have some PB Blaster on hand. You probably won't need this as much for the engine oil, since that is removed much more often than, say, your front or rear diff or the transfer case. But it's always good to have some on hand just in case. And if you do need it, I just recommend spraying it on there a day or two beforehand just to loosen it up. Of course, you will need an oil funnel to pour the oil back into the engine without spilling it all over the place. You will need an oil pan to catch all the oil, of course. And then to keep things nice and clean when you are removing the oil filter from the top of the engine block, I recommend getting some kind of a HVAC or just pretty much any kind of a hollow tube. I think this is like $5 at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's 5 inch of an inch thick, and you will see how I'll be using this in just a second. Okay guys, so a couple quick things to point out before I actually uh, let the oil out. For point of reference, here is your front cross member. This is your front differential, if you have a 4x4 obviously. And this is the bolt we will be removing to drop all the oil. If you do have a front skid plate, whether it is the TRD one or one of the aftermarket ones, uh, most, if not all of them, do come with some kind of hole right under this, so you can actually do your oil changes without removing that front skid plate. Uh, just for so you guys can actually see what I'm doing, obviously, I did want, uh, go ahead and remove mine. Plus I got another video coming on the, the skid plate anyway, so just wanted you guys to be able to see clearly what I will be doing with this. All right, so before I actually loosen up the bolt, I do have my oil catch pan ready, and I just have it sitting on top of my uh, toolbox for my socket wrench set. 
just to lift it up a little more because you know this stuff usually comes out faster than you think so you definitely don't want anything to spill if you can avoid it. I did just drive over to my parents house to use their flat garage. You do want to make sure you're on as level ground as possible. And also since that was just to drive up a few miles it, it should have warmed the oil up enough uh, to where it will flow a lot smoother. Otherwise if you do this cold it might just sort of glug out since it's at a, a cold. Especially today because it's about 30 degrees right now. So I have my socket wrench ready. Curious to see how much pressure it takes to loosen this up. Actually, I didn't even need the cheetah bar. It loosened up not too tight at all. One quick thing to point out also, if you are doing this with your skid plate on, obviously you will need a deep socket, 14 millimeter, to get in there. All right, it is loose enough to do by hand now, so make sure your catch can is ready. And there it goes. Good thing about this one compared to some of the other oil changes is this is directly straight. It's a straight drop. The other ones come out at an angle and they usually come out at an angle you're not expecting. Uh, so it's really fun with that oil spill. You see right here, uh, this does have a washer on it. It's always good to inspect the washer just to make sure it's not deteriorated. My truck only has 37,000 miles on it, so it should be good. Go ahead and clean this off. And obviously you just let that drain uh, as long as it takes. Shouldn't take too long, maybe just a few minutes. All right guys, so my oil is just about done draining. Here is the factory oil plug. You can see the washer on the bottom. Looks perfectly good as you would expect. Uh, this is pretty hardy, so I wouldn't expect that to deteriorate pretty quickly. Uh, you do, you can reuse this, but you know me, you know I love mods, so this gives me a chance to show you guys the famous Fumoto drain valve. So what this does, you can see it screws right back into the factory uh, location, and this makes it very easy to do, and very easy and very clean to do your oil and changes next time. Uh, they do make these, this part is actually called the nipple, I'm not making that up. And if you get this, they also send you some plastic tubing, so you can just put that around the top, run the tubing directly into your drain pan so it eliminates the risk of any spillage. This is the switch, so in the closed position, I'm not sure if you can see, you just push it uh, out to the right and then down, and I'm not sure if you can see it open right there. Also, in case you are paranoid, which you may be rightly so about anything bumping this while you're off-roading and then dumping all of your oil, that would be a one-of-a-kind, like, terrible luck for it to actually bump it and then slide it down to open this thing. Uh, so by design, they make it so it's uh, the chances of that are slim to none. Uh, plus, uh, the way this is tucked up in there, it's pretty safe, especially if you have a skid plate, obviously. But they do make these little tabs also to actually install this little uh, fail-safe. You do it so the Fumoto is pointed towards you if you have the nipple face, uh, facing down. It is sort of tight to get on there, so you just press it until it snaps right into place right there. And you are done. I will put a link in the description where I got this, just the Fumoto uh, website in general. I believe there's another brand of these, uh, not Fumoto. I can't remember what it's called, but it does very similar thing. And I want to say this is 20 or 25 bucks. Just kind of a cool feature to have. Everywhere I've seen people uh, talking about these, I have not seen one person say they did not absolutely love it. So that is a mod you might want to look into in the future. So I will obviously be reusing this instead of the factory oil plug. Okay, you can see the oil's just barely dripping out there, so I'm just gonna wipe it off and then hand tighten the Fumoto valve in there. Okay, so there's the Fumoto valve all uh, screwed in. Uh, it does say just to hand tighten this with a crescent wrench using this bottom uh, hex piece and it says just hand tighten it, don't over tighten it obviously. Initially I tried doing this with me on the left side uh, and it was kind of a, a pain so I found it much easier to get lined up and everything especially because I still have my oil here because it was dripping just a little bit. Uh, so try it on the right side, it should go right in. Okay with the Fumoto valve installed underneath the next part involves running that hose from the bottom of the filter. There is a small uh, nipple underneath there also, so when you remove this, there is a little bit of oil in here. 
and it will fall into this catch can and if you don't have anything attached to that nipple it will drip all over the place. I'm going to run my hose directly from the bottom of this down into my oil waste bucket. And the hose I got is kind of stiff so I probably recommend getting something a little smaller, more pliable. Okay, you can see I've got the hose run directly into my waste collection bucket. It is attached to the bottom of the filter right there, and mine's pretty tight. You may want to put a clamp on it if, uh, if yours is a little loose, obviously. Next step may involve using a tool I did forget to mention in the beginning. Uh, these are called filter removal tool. So you will simply grab the filter and loosen it up, twist it counterclockwise. You may or may not need these. You might be able to get it by hand, but it does start moving pretty easily, you can see. These are like 10 bucks. Definitely good to have in your uh, toolbox. Okay, so now that the filter is loose, I've got a couple paper towels I'm gonna put on the bottom as soon as I lift it up. To minimize the mess, obviously do this slowly. You can see, hopefully you can see, I'm blocking the light there, you can see it leaking out. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that leak out. I don't want it to overflow, obviously. I'm not sure how many ounces this will actually hold. It's enough to warrant a little caution though. Just let that drain out. Almost loose. It wasn't that much at all actually. And old filter right in the trash. All right, before you put the new filter on, go ahead and take a paper towel or something and soak up as much of that old oil as you can, especially in the uh, little catch reservoir there. It's kind of hard to get to, but kind of fold the paper towel and wedge it down in there. Should soak it up if you got the right type of paper towels. Definitely don't want this stuff sloshing around the engine bay. All right, regarding the new filter, first of all, I want to make sure everyone knows this does come with a plastic piece on the bottom. Please remove that. They always say a good trick is to take some of the new oil and rub your finger along the seal right here. Running the new oil on there helps it seat firmly and prevent any kinds of leaks. So I dip my finger in the new oil right there, just run it right around. Get a little more on there. All right, some of these do come pre-lubed, but the Toyota box did say go ahead and do this, so that's what I'm doing. And just go ahead and install it. Screw it right back on. And go ahead and get this hand tight. It does go on nice and smooth. I want to over tighten this and break it so I'm going to get it hand tight and then just give it as tight a squeeze as I can just so it won't come off with any slight pressure. If you are not keeping track of your maintenance records uh, using a spreadsheet like Excel or something like I do, you can get a pen or put some tape on here and mark you know what mileage and what date you did go ahead and do this oil change. All right now it's time to put the new oil in. Go ahead and remove your oil filter cap. Remember, if you do have the TRD oil filler cap, that does add 7 horsepower guaranteed. Set this on my battery. I like to use the, uh, the long one just because it's a little easier because the angle is weird once you're holding one of these big 5 quart things. So, time for the pour. Make sure you're grabbing it just in case. And do a slow steady pour. Don't want to do it too much. After you put the initial uh, five quarts of oil in, it does say start the truck, let it run for 30 seconds just to get the oil in there. And then remove your dipstick. Wipe it off. And put the dipstick back in to get an accurate reading of where the oil is and then you'll be able to figure out how much uh, more you need to add. Mine, I'm not sure if you can tell. It actually looks like it's about halfway up between uh, the two marks. So. 
Okay guys, after you uh, put the correct amount of oil in your truck, you are technically done, but you may or may not have a check engine or you know maintenance required light on your dash. All I had to do to remove that is you hold the trip button, which I know it's dark in here, it might be hard to see. It's the button you press over here on the right side that changes all your, uh, you know, your odometers and all that. So you hold that in and keep it holding, put your key in the ignition and turn it into the on position. Do not turn the truck completely on. And this will start beeping. And for me, as soon as it stopped beeping while I was still holding the trip button, the uh, the warning light went away. If yours uh, does not, while still holding the trip, turn the truck off, keep holding the trip, and then turn it back into the on position and it should be taken care of for you. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching the video. If you have made it this far, then you have successfully avoided the stealer ship. Give yourself a pat on the back for saving a little money you can spend on other sweet Tacoma mods and for taking the pride in working on your truck yourself. Really the only thing left to do is if you have a waste collection uh, thing for your oil like I do, take it to any auto parts store and they will uh, recycle that for you and empty that out for you. Uh, go ahead and check out my other Avoid the Steelership videos which I will go ahead and link above. Thank you for stopping by. If you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Comment below and hit the bell notification so you're notified every time I upload, which is twice a week. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.